So, hi Keith. So, Keith is on the telephone again. Um, so, welcome Keith and everybody back to the 16th week of the spiritual journey. Uh, I hope you've had a good, good week. Did you get lots of Christmas presents? Okay. Okay. Did you notice it was snowing this morning? Somebody rang me and told me, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. It, it, was, it was only for a short time and then it started raining again. Yeah. Oh, it's about four degrees Celsius. So, can you remember what we looked at last meeting on the 22nd of December? Uh -huh. Very good. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, we were talking about cycles and biorhythms. Yeah, you remember that. Okay. So, do you remember there was a conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn? Yes, no. Right. Okay, well, yes, yes, I, I, I actually made a little video um, of that, and, and I, I will be, um, I've posted that in different places, but when I make the YouTube video of this meeting, I will put that um, Merry Christmas video uh, in the comments, so, so you can go straight to it, but it will be on, on the... Uh, uh, the Universal Comprehension website as well. Yes. So, as I told you, I made a little video over Christmas, which you can look at in your own time. It shows a conjunction at about a quarter width of the moon. Yes. So, so um, Saturn and Jupiter are separated by by. Uh, um, a quarter width of, of what you would see at the moon when you look at the, look at the moon. Now, um, the link was sent to you uh, by email titled "Some Videos." Uh, it's like I say, it's in the uh, Facebook group. Yes, um, it's a ten-minute video, including shots of the sun, sunrise, sunset the moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, yeah, which were all possible to see with the naked eye. But uh, depending on, on um, the, the equipment that you're using, you might not be able to see them. Yes, but it depends on the quality of, of your equipment too. Now, um, a quick mind livener for today, yes. I'd like you to name a flower when I say a color. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So white. Rose. Green. Okay. Blue. Bluebells. Yellow. Yellow. Okay. Red. Good. Black. Oh, okay. <laughs> black tulip. Okay. They say there's a black orchid as well. Yes. Yes. Okay, so so this time, tell me ten flowers you can think of, different to those mentioned so far. Ten different flowers. Can you do that? Uh, 
Have you ever he heard of uh, the Eucharist flower? Uh, well, uh, there's a link in the P on the PDF that, that you can look at uh, and you can look up Eucharist too. Yes. There's things like uh, Phrygia, um, snapdragons, yes, lots of different flowers. Um, okay, so also flowers can be attributed to planets. Yes, now here's a short list. The sun, can you imagine what flower would go with, with the sun? Mm, okay, a sunflower. <laughs> of course. Okay, now um, the moon, that would be a busy Lizzie. Yes. Because the moon uh, is something that, um, that's, well, you've heard of the silvery moon. Yeah, yeah the silvery moon. The, the silvery moon is very active, like a busy Lizzie. Okay. Uh, and then you have Mars, a poppy, yeah, a nice red colour, and Mercury, that's a cornflower. Okay, Jupiter, a passion flower, and Venus, a lily, Saturn, a rhododendron. Yeah? Okay, so, so, so those are, those are the, the planets and the flowers that go with them. So, according to their nature. Now, we have already talked of organic life on Earth, processing sunlight. Yes, there are two lights, fixed and moving. In fact, we humans are like walking solar panels. Do you remember we talked about that? Okay. So um, you j just have to go back into the into the uh, the videos to have a look at that. So so flowers, according to their color, pick up a certain light frequency yes. energy to maintain their own life and we find energy to feed the planet. Yes, because that's that's the idea of being solar pa panels that. Um, the solar panel can maintain itself with the energy that it's, um, that it's getting, yes, getting from um, the light that's coming into it, and uh, feeding the planet the energy that's going straight into the planet. So I also sent you a picture of the laws of creation, a scene in a triangle, it's on the Facebook group, The Spiritual Journey 21, dated May 25th. Yes, this is something we talked about long ago. Um, a good video to watch is Age of Truth, the presentation by Mark Stolk. Yes, the link is on the PDF uh, below, and it, it will also be on the YouTube video of this meeting. Now, Mark Stalk outlines world history from an esoteric point of view. A very interesting um, uh, presentation. So he he presents the laws of creation in the following manner. Yes. Now um, I've done. I've drawn up a, a, a little diagram. Now this is this is the diagram. You can't see this, but. Uh, it, it's it's on the video. Um, this is the the diagram from the 25th of May, and this one is today's diagram. Yes, which you can't see, but I'll, I'll talk talk you through it. Now, at moon level, um, which is the bottom level in the triangle, um, we see the seed, yeah, the seed of a, a plant, the seed of a flower. The next level in this triangle is planet level, and that would be the level of germination. Now, we go up then to, to sun level, and that's where the, uh, the plant 
or the seed breaks through the earth and sees the sun. Yes, so that's sun level, sprout level, and it grows then, it grows a stem, and it grows the, the leaves. Yes, that's uh, considered a star level. Um, now, galactic level or um, celestial level is where the plant flower begins to form a bud. So you have the bud. Now, for the human, this is the throat level. Purgatory level is where the flower appears. Now, the flower, yes, so we have the flower level, purgatory level. Um, the flower signals to the energy of whatever color it is, yes, so it can get fertilized. And then we have the top level, um, which is, we call it the God level, which is the fertilized level, where energy comes into it and fertilizes it, fertilizes it and it gets fertilized by birds and bees, um, you know the story. Now, flowers are like cups, yes? Like our hands. If you can imagine your hand making a cup shape. So, so they can draw energy and bring it back into the system, yes, like this. So the seven levels, which I've just talked about, are to do with the maintenance structures. There are seven holes in the head. There's one for the mouth, two for the nostrils, two for the ears, two for the eyes. Then there is an octave change where you develop and activate your pineal gland, which could result in the eighth hole, which would be through your skull. Yes. Or, and your skull, skull becoming soft like a newborn baby. In fact, babies are born, you could say, with the eighth hole already. And then the way we live, we, we step out of being natural and the, the skull goes um, hard or thick. Yes. Now, we've talked of this before. This allows your brain to breathe and develop. In ancient Egypt and other cultures, they would employ the use of tree planting. Do you know what tree planting is? Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it, it, it allows the, the, the brain to breathe, yes. Some, in ancient times, it was used to, to reduce migraines, yes, because the, the brain was very active. Now, there are seven levels in, in the rainbow, a week of octaves. There has been one movement in creation from energy, which is um, on this diagram, from God to physical, yes? From the top level of energy to the bottom. So if we look at just one aspect of this celestial or galactic level, we see on the, pla uh, on the plant, this would be the level of the flower bud. Yes, so here on the, on the on the plant, we have the flower bird. Um, different to the stem and the leaves, which are at star level, a different function. So our voice box could be considered as a, um, as a galactic level. 
It is one of those attributes that separates us from the animals, the ability to create sounds and communicate. Now, part of my university degree was dealing with this phenomena, yes? The, um, the possibilities we have with linguistics. A high level, indeed, when considering the structure of creation. Do you remember the law that says, if you want to study man, study the universe, and if you want to study the universe, study man? Do you remember that one? Okay, that's okay. This then is, um, this then we can add to the greatest knowledge of all as written in Palm for point four yes um which you remember the greatest wealth yes we talked about that last week now finally for today i'd like to mention that if you want to buy a Vercel tarot pack just let me know yes the Vercel tarot pack yes tarot yes so um, I'd like to look at card 17 today, the star card, yes? Now, you could say this is a Christmas card, yes? You, um, we've already seen the star card, uh, just for people who haven't seen this card from the Versal Tower Pack. But basically, uh, the star card has a star on it. Um, this year, as we have seen what some are saying, in the star of Bethlehem, uh, the conjunction, hang on, the conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. Now, this, this card, 17, says, well done. And Keith, you are a star, yes? The star of this show, so well done. Okay, <laughs> so if we have a quick look at, um, Try God now. Point com. Try uh, dash God. Point com. We see this con uh, this conjunction between uh, Jupiter and Saturn comes every four hundred years, and they have traced it back to being in the sky in seven BC. So perhaps a man was born at that time who became known as Jesus Christ. If that is so, he was, he was probably born on the 15th of September, 7 BC. So therefore, was a Virgo, yes? However, however, the truth of the biblical story is altogether a different story, pieced together by the Council of Nicaea. Yes, they created the religion, if you like, which one can believe by faith if one chooses, or to do one's own research and try to establish a solid foundation for one's belief. Right, as is depicted in the, in the tarot card 16, the falling tower. Yes, now we've looked at this card be before as well. Here, a tower can be built by development. Yes, you can be a tower of strength. And research, um, well, without such research, any development is likely to fall. Yes, hence the warning of the falling tower. So that's all for this week. Now, I hope to see you next week for the 17th week of the spiritual journey, second year on the 20th, um, well, it will be next Tuesday, yes? Um, so hopefully see you then. Do you think you will have your tablet working by then? Oh, well that would be good news. Okay, so, so Merry Christmas from me, yes? Yeah, I hope you're waving there, um, Keith. 
Okay. So bye for now.